1998 yes 1998 ke ha ke tholo so so ke ra ra ke tjurki so ha ke fitli mabane in this thing i've been there i can tell you something amen i i am a, i work part time for Tswane university of technology on the side i am i do i do business i do executive i do life coaching amen and then i am a nlp practitioner i'll encourage you just google it it will tell you what is an nlp amen but that's what I do on part-time. Amen. This morning, I want to talk about what we call discouragement. I want to talk about what we call discouragement. I know in the church is something that we never talk about. But let me guarantee you, all of us, especially when you are over 12 years, Sometimes in your life, you go through discouragement, and the issue could you are not aware. For guys, we all go through discouragement. And uh, the aim of, of this is not to promote discouragement, but is to make sure that you are aware when discouragement has crept in in your life. Because most of us, you are discouraged, and sometimes you are not aware that discouragement has crept in in your life. For Barcelona, discouragement is a negative or a bad attitude. Discouragement is a negative or it's a bad attitude. And uh, I, I want to start by saying this, Barcelona. Does it mean when you are discouraged, when discouraged, you have done something wrong? Does it mean when you are discouraged, you have lost your spirituality? Does it mean when you are discouraged, you no longer walk with God? Does it mean when you are discouraged, there is sin in your life? Or, or, or when you are discouraged, you have denied your faith? Or you are no longer living right? But when being discouraged is part of the journey. The question is, what do you do when you are discouraged? People make decisions and make some choices as a result of being discouraged. People leave churches. People divorce. People change careers. Some people even backslide because of being discouraged. In fact, it's been proven that the number one cause of divorce is discouragement. And, and the issue is most people, when they're discouraged, they are not aware that they're discouraged. I know people by Longhori every year, they change careers, and they don't know why. I agree, you know them. There are people by Longhori every month, they are searching for, a, for but they call it greener pastures. Some of them, they are not aware that there's nothing wrong with the present employment. The issue of discouragement has crept in in their lives. Hore, and, and let me say this, Bazaran. Even Jesus, at some point in his life, went through discouragement. At the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus Christ said, Not my will, but your will be done. At the cross, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because people who are discouraged, they, sometimes they feel that everybody has left them. It's a sign that discouragement somehow has crept in in your life. Now, now for, 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 for those uh, who believe that when you preach, you have to read your Bible. Let me just accommodate you a bit. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 21. And Joshua chapter 6, verse number 7, verse 9, verse 18. Deuteronomy 1, verse 21. 
Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, verse 7, verse 9, verse 8, 18. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 21, it reads as, as following. Look, the Lord your God has sent the land before you. Go up and possess it. As the Lord God your fathers has spoken to you, do not fear or be discouraged. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 6, verse number 7, verse number 18, verse and 18. Be strong and be of good courage. Verse number 9. Have not I commanded you, be strong and be of good courage. Verse number 18, the last part. Only be strong and be good courage. One of the things that God warned Joshua about is being discouraged. Because God understood that in the, in, along the way you will God discourage but have a good courage. Moses, when the Israelites were about to go into Canaan, he told them, guys, be st have, don't be discouraged. Because he knew that as they enter Canaan, they are going to be discouraged. But he warned them against discouragement. We need to understand, discouragement is the result of being disappointed. Disappointed or disappointment, repeated failure and pain. And and let me say this: I know I don't have time to to, to to elaborate on it, but how you handle disappointment and failure is very critical and important. How you handle those two, because let me guarantee you, people will definitely disappoint you. Whether you think you are prayerful or you fast, people will definitely disappoint you. But how you handle disappointment and failure, it's very, very critical. Because, because let me guarantee you, as a definitely you will fail somehow. Definitely somehow you will fail. But how you handle failure, it's very, very critical and very important. And let me be un unpopular for a bit, Bazalwani. Bazalwani, pain is very critical for your life. We, in fact, we grow through pain. I know some of us have had harati pain, but we grow through pain. In fact, in most cases, God allows pain as a pro as a process for growth and maturity. Let me tell you, if you want to grow and you want comfortable growth, there's nothing like comfortable growth. If you want to grow, you have to face that certain things and overcome them. And sometimes God allows pain in your life for you to grow and mature. Khurbazwani, pain is a gift we need to appreciate. Pain is a gift. We need to, I, I know some of us, we, we fast and we cast out pain. Let me tell you, Bazalani, there's a reason why God allows pain in our lives. And uh, pain is beautiful. By the way, pain is beautiful. And let me say this. Without pain, this world will be ugly. Now, without feeling pain, this world will be ugly. The question is, Bazalwani, what tells you that something is wrong in your body? Let's talk. What tells you that something is wrong in your body? You need to go and see the doctor. Are you aware without pain, we will die without, without knowing? No, we will die without knowing, without pain. And by the way, Bazwa, we are all of us protected by pain. Hey, Dr. Mutuarai, I hear most people who come to you is because there's pain. Come on, Zoma, if there was no pain, a person will just faint and die. 
Nothing tells him that something is wrong in your body. Are you aware that without, I know there are no kids here. Are you aware that without pain, women will give birth without knowing? Again, what tells you that it's time, it's pain that you feel? Are you aware that without pain, you'll be walking in, when you are pregnant, you will walk at Plain Street and you'll just give birth without pain. But pain tells you, that gives you a sign that now it's time to go to the hospital. We, we need to learn to appreciate this gift called pain. We need to learn to appreciate this gift called pain. And our attitude towards it needs to change because pain, you need pain in your life sometimes. And by the way, there's a good pain and there's a bad pain. There's a pain that comes as a result of your doing. I get like it. Now, there's a pain that comes in your life just got to allow you to grow and mature. But you see what a challenge. Don't allow pain to discourage you. Don't allow pain to discourage you. If it's painful, go and see the doctor to check what's happening. Back to discouragement, Basra. I was just giving you for what causes discouragement. To encourage yourself is the ability to can speak to yourself. And Bazalani, to speak to yourself, it's something you will learn and practice. It's not a gift. There's no gift of speaking to yourself. For you to speak to yourself, it's something that you learn, you practice to learn to speak to yourself and listen to yourself. And unfortunately, this is a problem of many of us. We cannot speak to ourselves. And by the way, if you cannot speak to yourself, even if you can speak to you, it don't make sense. So you need to learn to take what we say to you and speak it to yourself. Meaning you encourage yourself by speaking to yourself. Because you know what is interesting? When you start to speak to yourself, you strengthen yourself. You speak strength to yourself. And Bazarano, one of the strengths you need to possess, especially in leadership, as a leader, is the ability to speak to yourself. I've come to realize, how How we can we We are wasting time. If we are not Terry coming to church late is wrong. You will never be in on time because you have never say, said that to yourself. Now I'm telling you, even if Apostle Kawawa can climb in this pulpit, unless you say it to yourself, no one will say it to you. And by the way, Bazaran, one of the things that we need to measure maturity is the ability to can speak to yourself. If you cannot speak to yourself, you are still immature. If you will depend on people to speak to you, you are still immature. You need to come to a point whereby you, you, you speak to yourself for what I'm doing is wrong. You need to come to a point whereby you can rebuke yourself. We what I'm doing is wrong. Because even if one of us run, even if if you cannot speak to yourself, we are wasting time. One, one strength that you need in your life is to be able to speak to yourself. Be able to encourage yourself. Because the only way out of discouragement it has to start with you. Now, now, there are 14 definitions of what do we mean when we say we are discouraged. There are 14 de definitions, but this morning I'm just going to focus on the six. Or what do we mean when you are say you are discouraged? 
Quran of Azul, it doesn't matter how prayerful you are. You, you, you will face discouragement. Because sometimes I can, we've got a tendency to hide behind praying. No, that's, that's what we do in the church. We hide behind, without facing the situation to say, I am discouraged. I need help. So, 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 so it doesn't matter whether you are prayerful or not. One way in your life you will face discouragement. But the question is, what do we mean when you say someone is discouraged or lack courage? Number one, when you are discouraged, we mean that you are being denied of your boldness or drive. You are being deprived of your boldness or drive. Meaning, boldness always exists where fear doesn't exist. Because one, you cannot be fearful and boldness at the same time. It's impossible. So whenever you know that you are fearful, meaning you, don't, you are not bold, you don't have boldness. And, and many of us, we live our lives out of fear. And I remember as one, fear is an unpleasant emotion. When you are fearful, you feel easily intimidated. The, the, the Christians like that, they always feel intimidated. Fear is an unpleasant emotion. No one has said you have been retrenched. It's because you live in fear. When you are when you, when you have been deprived of your boldness, you are being denied of your ability to stand bold. And Basulani, remember this: there is nothing you can stand for or you don't stand for. In life, there's no neutrality. It's either you stand for something or you don't. You cannot be neutral because remember, neutrality is a decision. And many of us, we come to church, but we don't know what we stand for. When people leave church, you leave. You don't know why you are leaving, but you, you leave. Because you don't know what you are standing for. And let me advise you, Basalwani. If you are looking for a perfect church, go and start one. Yeah, no, if you are praying for a perfect church, go and start one. And, and I'm definitely sure Apostle Hawako is not looking for a perfect church because you know there's nothing like that because people who make church are people and people are not perfect. So if you are looking for one, go and start one. The issue is you need to know what you stand for. And many of us, we don't know what we stand for or what we, what, we, what we don't stand for. So when you are discouraged, you don't know what you are standing for. Number two. What do we mean when we, are, we say you are discouraged? You are being deprived of your confidence or enthusiasm. You are being deprived of your confidence. And Basuani, by the way, remember this. You can be yourself without being apologetic. Many of us, we live our lives apologizing for who you are. And you need to learn to be yourself without being apologetic. That is confidence. I always tell people, once you start to justify who you are, know that something is wrong with who you are. Once you start to justify to people or omang, know her, there's something wrong. You need to learn to be yourself without being justifying who you are. When you have been deprived of your confidence, you fall, you fail to do things you know you can or don't struggle to do. No, 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 there, there are people like that. There are people like that. They fail to do things they know. They, they, I mean, they, they are skilled to do, to do these things, but they fail to do. It's because discouragement is scripting in your life. I mean, when you, are, when you have been deprived of your confidence, you are just lazy to think. 
or do anything or say anything. You lack creativity. Nothing makes sense to you. And, and one problem that we have in the churches, Bazalwani, we, we, we are lazy to think. Christians are lazy to think. I don't know why. And, and Bazalwani, the Bible is very clear. As a man think, so you see. When you have been deprived of your confidence, you are indecisive. You can't make decisions for yourself. You cannot decide on anything. Some people are so, are so fearful to make even decisions they want. He knows that I want this thing, but he cannot make decisions on that. Number three. What do we mean when you are discouraged? You are being deterred. Good, when you are being deterred, you do things or you act or proceedings by instilling fear or doubt of the consequences. Good, there are people by long before he do something, he knows what is the outcome. And because he knows that the outcome, he will never do it. You know people like that. When you go similar business, but why do you this business? I say it all, no real thing. No, why you do her? No, 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 When you have been deterred, you have lost focus. You know your destination is polukwani. When you have been deterred, you are more concerned about the negative. What if it doesn't work? The question is, what if it works? And, and, and I was one, I've come to realize in life, in life, things don't fail you. You fail things. No, things don't fail. You, we fail them. If you can check the business venture that failed in your life, not the business that didn't fail, you failed the business. No, no, no. C come close. Come to us. We will show you that no, the business that didn't fail, you failed the business. It's been proven that Barcelona, 75% of people who, who, who have been fired from Meragong, they've been thinking about it. And you know what's the problem? Once you start to think about it, you start to act in line with it. Once you small Lord believer, who I'm going to be fired, you will start to behave like somebody who, who, who will be fired. It's always like that. The question is, what if it works? When you are being deterred, you always subjective instead of being objective. Not, not that people who are so subjective, who, who, who knows, who knows all the problems in life, no solutions. They are always subjective. Or when you have been deterred, you, you are never objective. You never bring a solution. You always comes with problems. You know people like that. They always want to matata. And some of them, they come to church every Sunday. Her experience is that they are going to satan. Now, when the presence of God has come into the church, there's always something wrong 
they are doing happening. It's a sign that discouragement has crept in in your life and you are not aware. When you are being deterred, you have a feeling that something is not right. And you don't know exactly what is not right. You know people like that. In their lives, what pillar, what pillar or no, something is not right. How you can say something right, but there's something not right here. Number four. When discouragement, when you are discouraged, it means you are being deepened. D double E P E N E D. When you are deepened, you do things not knowing why you are, why you do them. Normally, you don't do things you are supposed to do. You do things you don't know why you are doing them, but you keep on doing it. You know people like that. I mean, I grew up in Chabani, in Pretoria. It's the same thing. But about Jola, which we have Jola, about Jola. Some of them are not known as a Joli. And how come you why you are doing this Haiti, but he's doing it? Or when, when you are being deepened, you are just coping in life. You feel helpless. Even if people want to help you, they cannot help you because you are helpless. You are just coping. When you have been deep into, you have lost a sense of purpose and vision. You don't know why you come to church. You know, there are people like that. You don't know why they, are, they come to church every Sunday. But they, 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 they come. For when you have been deep into, you have lost the why you are here. Why you are here. For when you have been deep into, you are impatient with everyone and everything. It's sad. There are people who are impatient with them. With him. He's impatient with him. And he will want to be impatient with other people. But when patience start with you. You start by first being patient with yourself. You will take the same patience you have with yourself and demonstrate it to others. But when you are being deep into you are impatient with yourself and others. When you are being deep into you are feeling lazy to do things you want or need. Have you met somebody are otoregetala? Honaldi Jokon Drew. Mara Agahabe. Mar Otoregetala. Why you jerk Otoregetala? There's everything in the house. Mar Habe. When you are being deepened, you live to please people. Could you have been controlled by people's opinion what they think about you? We know that there are people who will come to church at Hapile Apir. If nobody says to him, You look beautiful, Arba jealous. We know people like that. And people leave church because for four weeks he's been coming looking nice and nobody has said you look nice. It's because you are living according to people's opinions. You don't do things for yourself. And let me tell you, Bazalwan, let me tell you something. We are people. Remember that we are people. Worship team, remember that we are people. When we sing and we don't say the music was right, doesn't mean it's wrong. The music was bad. It's because we are people. Now those who preach, if you preach and we don't come and say that someone was powerful, doesn't mean the someone was wrong. It's because we are people. So you need to learn to do it even if we don't notice or we don't say anything. 
Ladies, if your husband doesn't say you look nice, doesn't mean how much. That doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It's because he's human. Because many of us, we, we, I mean, we, we think we can, we can run our marriages with people's opinions. It doesn't work. Because we are people, sometimes we will forget. And doesn't mean we are jealous. Or we've got something against you. It's just, it's just that we are people. We are human beings. Number five. When we are discouraged, is to be dismayed. Is to be dismayed. Being dismayed, it's a feeling of being worried or disappointed. It's a feeling of but you don't know when you have been dismayed, you are sad or annoyed. And the truth is you don't know why you feel that way. You know there are people like that who are moody. Who have been controlled by their moods. Today when you woke up with Sunday, I, know, I don't feel like going to church. He doesn't come. W when he's happy, he wants everybody to be happy. Ha kwa tile, since everybody akwate. You know people like that. And ha kwa tile, halib motor wa kwa tile, he doesn't know what makes him sad, but he's sad. I know even now, there's somebody that I'm speaking, he, he just feels annoyed to him. No, he just feels annoyed. He doesn't know what's annoying him about me, but he just feels annoyed. It's a sign that discouragement has crept in, in your life. When you are this, why I've been dismayed, it's a feeling of mistrust and suspicion about everything and everyone. You know people who will say, I don't like this guy. Why? I don't know, but I don't like him. There's, there's something offish about him. You know this guy, but he will say, I don't like this guy. Oh, he did say nothing. It, it's a sign that, you know, no, no, discouragement is crept in your... You suspect about how trust about and now we put the number of I trusted this guy, Unkirili, or this lady. Ukamutarwaiti hakilo hakile kere gang. When I look at this lady, something is not right about her. How much are you going to this lady? How much are you going to like her? It's a sign that there's something wrong with you. When I've been dismayed, it's a feeling of not being in control of your life. You know, things are just happening in your life. You don't know what's happening, but things are happening. It's a sign that you are feeling dismayed. You don't know, but things are just happening. And, and then uh, you are always a victim. You don't take responsibility for anything. I, I, I always tell leaders, secure. when you are a leader and the day you start to blame people you are leading, know that you have lost your position. And let me challenge you, those who are in leadership, whether it's corporate or what, what. As a leader, you take responsibility of what goes right and what goes wrong. Even if you don't understand what happened, but as a leader, you take responsibility. Because the reason why you are a leader is for responsibility. But many of us, we always blame. Number six. When you are discouraged, you are, is to be dissuaded. Dissuaded, D-I-S-S-U, 
A D E D. You feel dissuaded. Could you have been robbed of a reason to go on in life? And we say, what's the problem? And you cannot go back. You don't want to go forward, but the problem is you cannot go back. Or you are being persuaded of opportunity to do what you want. I want an opportunity. For this is an opportunity for me to, to save my marriage, to, to, to get a new job, or, or to... To start a new business. You see it's an opportunity. But you don't, you don't have courage to go for it. And the issue is you know that you cannot go back. When, when you have been dissuaded, it's a feeling of being confused. And you don't know what confuses you. But you are confused. It's a feeling of being frustrated by everything, but you don't know exactly what is frustrating you. For when we are dissuaded, you don't take responsibility for anything. You don't. Ujile Hawiti. Wasakereken Hawiti. Barawaya. When we are dissociated, we are bitter. You are cynical. Resentment. You are moody, like I said. You complain about everything and everyone. There are people who complain. Now there are people, I mean, even now, after church, you'll be complaining. And Baswan, let me say this about bitterness. Baswan, you need to learn to deal with bitterness in your life. Because bitterness is like acid. Bitterness is like cocktail everything. Guru, if you, have, if you can spend an hour with a bitter person, we will know that no, some, the person we are with is bitter. For bitterness was one, it's a stage you must not find yourself in being bitter. Deal with it. Because bitterness is a horror. How is it bitter? How is it bitter? We know how a bitter person a bitter person, even when he comes to church, because bitterness clouds your judgment about things. You know people who say ke batla monna mar ga fetse ba re banna ke dimpha you know them ke batla mosadi mar basadi ba tella you know them wa rapela for this thing mar ga fetse o rapela he saying something contrary to what he's praying for it's because you are bitter and, 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 and if if you can be around a bitter person, you come close. It's because that person is so discouraged in his life. But the problem is he's not aware that he is discouraged. When you are dissuaded, you live your life. There's nothing that you do in your own doing. Even what you do, there has to be somebody who's been blamed for what you do. When you are dissuaded, you are is feeling of uncertainty about everything and everyone. I mean, resting in Nagwaka for its prosperity time. Come on, Zaman, when you give, you are, you, you are tapping into the prosperity that God has given to us. But you know, when you are uncertain, 
you give, you don't know why you give. You give because you don't know You don't see it as an opportunity to prosper. It's because you are uncertain. When you are dissuaded, Kuri, you are just angry. And you see the issue, Kuri, you don't know why you are angry. But And by the way, there are people who are angry even towards God. And let me say this, Barcelona. You need to understand that I hope those who have been saved for a very long time, it's not everything that you are going to ask and pray for that God will do. Because Barcelona, we didn't have a boy. We didn't have a room. We didn't have a boy. So if you are angry at God, you can't tell me what's wrong. Because whether you can't tell me how you can't tell me, he's still God. And you know what is depressing? Mutu anta kwa teti mudimu. He goes and pray for mudimu amu kwa teti. And you see the truth of God, Bazwan, when you are angry about God, you end up praying prayers that God will never answer. That's the sad part about that. Harbazwan, let, let, me, let me just emphasize this. To be discouraged is part of the journey. And uh, to be discouraged doesn't mean you are not a child of God. No. And, and when you are discouraged, doesn't mean God has forsaken you. And you see, the problem is many of us, we are discouraged, especially 2020, but you are not aware. For discouragement is scripting in your life. But let me say this, Brother Rani. We all go through discouragement. Little number root, we all go through discouragement. In some point in your life, you will face discouragement. Even in your marriage, you will face discouragement. But most of the time, when you are discouraged, you don't know. And you know, Zulani, always remember this. As a child of God, you cannot be defeated. But we surrender. And most of the time we surrender because discouragement is scripted in your life. So Baswan, I'm just here this morning to say to you, never give up. Never give up. Tell somebody, never give up. Never, never give up. Even if you are discouraged, never give up. Situations will come to make you to give up. Don't give up. Because one, we don't go forward because it's nice. We go forward because we have to. So never give up. Guys, I, I know some of you are about to give up. You are just coming to church because it's Sunday. It's a hobby. It's a habit. I'm just here. I just drove to Purtera to come and tell you, never give up. Never. It might seem blue, gloomy, or, or, or nothing makes sense. Keep on going. It makes sense as you keep on going. Don't surrender. I, I, I. Don't give up. Keep 
going. It makes sense as you keep on going. But let me guarantee you, Bazan, you are going to be discouraged, but don't give up. Keep going. Even if you don't see the direction you are going, just keep one step at a time. Just keep going. I, I know 2020, some people thought by, by now this country, I mean, this world don't be here because of COVID. Guys, we survived COVID and we will, st- we will continue surviving. So just keep going. How about you wear a mask? Wear a mask. Keep going. It will make sense as we keep on going. Amen. Let's keep on going. Let's let's rest. Let's fight on. Amen. We have come to the end of the service to talk about Moritin Gesi to thank the Lord for us. And then those who came in late, we will leave the basket.